bit or not to bit? That is the question. Whether it is nobler to the ear to suffer the shrieks and artifacts of atrocious digitalization, or to take turntable and tone arms against a sea of bites. Well, my friends, sorry for the theatrics, but I thought it was appropriate. There is a question we're going to ask today. For all its advantages, digital recording and digital sources to many people don't sound nearly as good or as involving as analog. And the job of a digital to analog converter is to take bits and turn them into something that sounds, in theory, analog. There's no question that digital to analog converters create an analog signal, but does it sound like a real, honest to goodness, pleasing to the ear, analog signal? That is a quest that has taken me a number of years, and I may have come closer than ever before to having it addressed. So stick around for my review of the Macintosh MDA 1000 digital to analog converter. Are we able to get closer to analog nirvana from digital sources? Let's see. You're now looking at the rear end of the MDA 1000. On the left side, besides the AC inputs and the remote controllers, you will notice that there are seven digital inputs. Three of them are coaxial. They're the orange looking one that look like RCA plugs. Then it has three Toslinks uh, optical inputs. And the last input, the seventh one, is a digital balanced digital audio input. For example, the MCD-1000 transporter uses that, and that's the one I would use if I have a, a, a source device that uses that. On the right, you will notice that the MDA-1000 has both balanced and uh, unbalanced audio outputs. For most of my testing and in my final setup, I use coaxial input over the optical, and for output, I use the balanced outputs. So pretty simple in terms of inputs and outputs. Moving over to the front of the unit, on the left side we have the input selector that will select one of the seven inputs and also a setup uh, button. You can use the combination of the input selector and the setup button to assign names to the various inputs, which is uh, pretty convenient. Moving over to the right side of the unit, in addition to the on and standby button, you will notice a level knob. What this means is that the MDA-1000 has a built-in preamplifier and uh, therefore you can use it without a preamp. You can go directly from the MDA-1000 to a power amplifier. And based on my experience, the preamplifier in this unit is of very high quality. Now, having said that, I must say that I do prefer the sound of the MDA-1000 going through a preamplifier, especially something my, like my tubed C220 preamp. Uh, I like uh, the bit of rounding that the tube gives to the sound. But some people might really like the clean, uncorrupted sound that you get from the built-in preamp. And you also avoid having extra circuitry and you have one less interconnect to deal with. So that's a real great feature. <laughs> Let's talk about the sound of the MDA-1000. When RV components, I take my time, especially if they're expensive ones, and in this case I spent almost three months listening and taking notes. And as I read through several pages of notes, I look for adjectives and terms and uh, feelings that come up through those notes. And when I look at my notes for the MDA-1000, the adjectives that keep coming up over and over again are words like silky, smooth, liquid, refined, polite. Uh, I listened to it directly, I did some uh, A-B comparisons, I had short-term listening sessions, short-term, long-term listening sessions, I listened through streaming, audio, internet, radio, uh, CDs, of course, the whole gamut. And those words, especially when compared to other digital sources, came there is not going to be 
a night and day difference between a high quality DAC and this rather expensive uh, Macintosh component. You're not going to do some A-B testing and discover immediately this sounds 10 times better, it's worth 10 times the price of, an, of another uh, DAC. But one of the things that I've learned in my years in audio is not to trust quick judgment. The thing that matters the most to me is the following. Does this component in this system make me want to listen, make me want to listen to music more or less than before? I've listened in the past to expensive systems that had the ultimate uh, in resolution, detail, dynamics, you name it, all the hi-fi buzzwords, but I couldn't listen to them for more than five minutes before wanting to get the heck out of that room. I experienced here ear fatigue. Now, on the other hand, there are components that may not be the highest in resolution, but what they do with the music, they massage the signal so it just sounds so pleasing and compelling that you just don't want to stop listening. And achieving this musicality, this magic, is particularly difficult, at least in my opinion, with digital components. Digital sound has an edge to it that can be very fatiguing. So in my search for the perfect DAC, for the perfect way to reproduce uh, a digital signal, the key criteria for me is does this make me want to listen to more digital music or does it make me want to run to my turntable and tone arm and some good old fashioned vinyl? Now, I think it's kind of silly to compare uh, a, a digital to analog component to, to vinyl. They're very different. I like listening to both for different experience. But the one thing that I can say about the MDA-1000 is that it does take a lot of the edge of digital. It could be because of the app sampling. I don't know exactly how it happens. I've read articles that uh, try to explain why app sampling does that. But for me, the bottom line is that it takes some of the harshness out of digital. In fact, to the point that I'm now able to listen to streaming audio through services like Pandora and Rhapsody for hours at a time without getting fatigued. It's not going to sound as good as a CD, of course, but at least I'm not getting fatigued. And for my background listening, it is perfect. So the way I can summarize the sound of the MDA-1000 is silky, refined, smooth, takes the edge off digital. It moves it closer to that analog idea that we've been talking about. And to me, that is exactly what I was looking for. It is an expensive component. There may be others that do this trick, but I believe I have found my uh, magic trick that will allow me to listen to CDs and uh, streaming, um, uh, internet streaming radio, streaming uh, music services without listening fatigue. For me, that is huge. It is worth the price. It's a beautiful component. I believe it will hold its value. I'm glad to have it in my system. Again, not inexpensive, but the fact that it allows me to listen to music that I don't want to turn it off is a huge thing. So the Macintosh MDA-1000 gets, for me, uh, the highest recommendation. I think I could pretty much do away with any other component in my system. If I had to keep one, it would be this one. Well, this is Alberto, again, with a highly personal opinion of the Macintosh MDA-1000, a fantastic piece of equipment. If, we can af if you can afford it, if your system is up to it, if you want to listen to more digital without fatigue, I can highly uh, recommend it. Thank you for listening. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.